I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to look at the power of Logic's templates. What exactly is a template? Well, normally when we start a new Logic project, it looks a bit like this. I've just selected new and I'm being greeted with the usual screen that asks me exactly where I want to start my project. Do I want to start with a software instrument? And if so, which one do I want to choose? Or do I want to start with an audio track or a drummer region or whatever? Now then, actually, most of us kind of get into patterns when we start working. And there are certain musical genres that particularly promote that idea. Like, for example, if I was scoring music to picture, it's likely that I'm going to want my pianos and my strings and my short strings and my brass and my winds and my percussion and all of the sounds that I might want to use in a score. Well, if what I had to do at the beginning of every single day was to set up all of those instruments with their reverbs and their effects and their EQs and all of the ways that I like to work, then I'd spend probably three hours of every day simply arranging a group of instruments that I use all of the time. If instead what I can do is to have those ready for me so that I have a template starting point for the work that I want to do, I can open my computer and be greeted with a group of sounds which are going to inspire the compositional process. Now, this is also true if you're not writing music for picture, if you're a singer-songwriter, even if you like to start every single day with the same reverb playing back through, um, uh, or a piano playing back through the same reverb, to have a template which has set those things up so that that's your starting point is going to save you half a minute. And every new instrument that you add is going to save you another half minute until you're saving tens of minutes or even hours. Okay, so how does a template work? Well, like this. What I'm going to do is to set up a software instrument. Now I'm going to imagine for a moment that the project that I want to sort of set up is a kind of singer songwriter session, okay? It's entirely possible I don't need retro synth, but that's okay because I can remove it. So having set up my first instrument track, instead what I can say to myself is, okay, well, when I'm writing songs, what instruments do I like to use? Well, okay, what I'm going to do is to get rid of retro synth and I might even open up Logic's library and say, okay, well, I like to start writing with a piano. And I find the piano, uh, I don't know, let's say a little bit dry, or I like to process it with a particular reverb. Well, of course, I can set that up too. It looks, in fact, like there are even a couple set up here. So what I could do would be to set my reverb level here, audition this piano. Okay, fine. So I'm happy with these settings. Now, why have I adjusted the reverb now? Well, if I was to save this project as a template right now, so that it's the starting point for the work that I do when I want to start writing with piano, that reverb level that I've just created here would be saved. Exactly that setting. Not just the bus sends ready to be there for the work that I want to do, but specifically that setting. In other words, if I boost the reverb a little bit now and save that template, the piano's got a little bit more reverb every single time I come back to the project. And everything about your Logic project will be sort of snapshotted and made I've just made that word up, I think. Nevertheless, made as a sort of snapshot and available to you every single time you open up your new template, including, let's say, the tempo at which we're working. If you don't write at 120 beats per minute ever, why would you want a project that opens at that, as in the logic default, every single time? Maybe you're the sort of singer-songwriter who likes to work at 96 BPM. So let's make that our tempo instead. Now, what I've also done here is to open up the custom display so that I can see all of the options available to me. And having selected that, if I save it, the transport bar will look like this every single time I open it. I think you can see where I'm going, literally every detail. And to give you one example, if I make the mistake of putting my playback bar at bar 25 and I save this project right now as a template, the playback thumbnail will be at bar 25 every single time I open up my project. Literally everything is saved. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this piano. Now maybe what I also do when I write songs is that I like to work with the drummer region. So what I might do would be to open up drummer, choose the genre or the playing style that I like, and I can obviously go through and create the sort of settings that I want to use. For now, I'm just going to leave that there. I'm going to close the library down. But probably when I first turn on my computer, whilst I want to have a drummer region region available to me so that I can configure its settings. I don't want it to be the first thing that I hear. So I'm going to mute that track. It's there and it's ready, but I want to turn my computer on, start noodling around with piano chords or a particular phrase, and then I might want to introduce beats. Similarly, what I might decide to do would be to set up another channel strip here, open up another instrument. Let's come and find a bass part. Maybe I like this Liverpool bass find that channel is sitting there as well. Now, when I start playing around with sounds, it could be that the balance level between the piano and the bass isn't what I want it to be. So the piano is this volume. 
And let's have a look at the bass. Okay, so if I decided that what I wanted was for the bass to be a little bit louder, I could either turn the piano down, I suppose, or I could just give this a little bit of a push, or I could come back to the compression settings here and turn up the makeup gain a little bit as well, so that the balance between the instruments is set as well. Now you might be thinking, okay, well that's pretty nerdy. Yeah, that's true, but at the same time, if every time I come to my template, I find myself turning the bass up because it turns out the balance isn't right, Let's make it part of the template so it's one less thing for me to have to do. Okay, let's suppose also, because I'm a singer-songwriter, what I want to do is to make sure that I've got audio tracks ready for any vocalist who might be coming in to perform on my tracks. It would be a good idea for me to have a couple, let's say, of audio tracks available. I'm going to set those up, and I'm also going to configure them to the input setting that I like to use when I'm recording. So I'm going to set up input one as the input stage for the project that I'm going to be working on. Now, if when my singer comes in, I might call this lead vocal, and I might decide to call this BV, backing vocal. If when the singer comes in, it's always the case that he or she likes to work to reverb, let's set that up as well. I'm gonna just make sure that the bus send is coming through to this large hall reverb. I'm gonna set up those levels so that again, it's one less thing for me to have to think about when the session starts. Effectively, I've got my uh, project configured. And as I say, every last detail of your project will be saved as part of your template. If I leave the mixer open, every time I open my template, the mixer will be open. If I'd rather it wasn't, I can close it back down. Similarly, I can set the zoom amount and Logic will remember that as well. So if I want the whole thing to be a bit more spread out, and if I want to get rid of the grid lines because I don't like them, I can get rid of those too. So effectively now I've got a session configured the way that I want it to be. I can even reorder the tracks if I like and put this up at the top so that the vocals come first. It's also true that the track that I select will be the track that is selected when I open up my template. So it's a good idea if I want to start with the piano just to make sure that that is the selected instrument so that every time I open my template, it's ready to go. Now, templates can be as deep and as complicated as you like. So effectively, I could save this little basic arrangement of sounds and tracks ready to go, and that could be a template in its own right. And that would be a good template for me to save. The thing about Logic is it doesn't limit you in terms of the number of templates that are available to you. So I could make this basic template and then I could make a whole series of really sophisticated ones as well. Let's take an example. Let's imagine these five tracks don't exist for a moment. What I want to do instead is to start thinking about a template maybe for scoring to picture, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mute all of those tracks and we're gonna pretend they're not there. We'll just keep working within the same project. So let's suppose what I want to do is to create a track. And again, I'm not worried about the instrument that's assigned to it. I can change those later on. I'm going to undo that plugin. And instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this Violin 1. I'm then gonna duplicate that track. And I'm gonna call it Violin 2. And I'm gonna duplicate it again. And this is gonna be my violas. And then I'm gonna duplicate it again, and these are gonna be my cellos, or if I'm feeling really posh, I could write celli, I suppose. And then here, I'm gonna call this double basses. All right, so I've now got five instruments which are ready to be my string section. Okay, well, depending on the samples that I'm using and the way that I want to work, it could be that the sounds that I'm working with are already uh, sort of panned into position. The sounds have been recorded in place. The violins are slightly off to the left-hand side, and the cellos are slightly off to the right but it could be that they're not. And that the next thing for me to do is to use the pan dials to basically um, sort of create the shape that I want to. And again, if I was to sort of map this out very roughly in terms of the way that an orchestra might be mapped, then I might end up with a shape a little bit like this. Now, it could be that I don't need those, depending on the sounds that I'm using, but it's another consideration. Do I want to preset pan positions for all of the instruments? I'm gonna undo those. So there we are, we're back to where we started. Okay, well, let's suppose what I also want to do is to sort of have the strings available to me, not just as individual instruments, but as a group. It could be that what I want to do is to have a reverb that can be applied to all of the strings at once, rather than separately for every single instrument. So this would be a good idea what I could do would be to set up a track stack for these strings. And again, this can all be part of my template. So if I create a track stack and I make a summing stack, then what I have a chance to do is to call this strings. 
Okay, so now what I've got is a fader that is going to control all of the string volume, but leave all of the other instruments alone. And obviously from here, what I could also do would be to set up reverbs. If I wanted a reverb that was for all of the strings, I could set it up from this channel. If I wanted a reverb that was just for violin one and left all of the other instruments alone, I could set up the reverb here instead. So it's up to me to decide how I want to structure the way that my template works. And it could also be, if I really wanted to go deep into a template, that I wanted to create a reverb for the strings that was only for the strings, that wasn't available to the other instruments within my template. In other words, I wanted a string reverb that had nothing to do with the brass reverb, for instance. Well, let's suppose I wanted to do that and make that part of my template too. What I could do would be to set up a new auxiliary bus. I'm going to set up bus number five, and I'm going to turn up these dials. And then on bus number five, what I'm going to do is to set up Logic's um, Space Designer, and I might choose a sort of hall style um, uh, plugin from here. I'm going to just come into the presets. I'm going to come into large spaces and find a nice big string hall, and that can be my string reverb. Okay, well, what if I want my string reverb to be part of my string track stack. In other words, effectively, I want the effect to be in there so that I can automate it and I can remember that it belongs to that. Can I do that in some way? Well, yeah, I absolutely can. I could come to this reverb, I can control click it, and I can create a track for it. And the moment I do that, I've now got my string hall reverb, which I can just move up and put inside my string stack. So now I've got a reverb for the strings that is part of my string mix. Now I could repeat that process for winds, brass, percussion, whatever instruments I want to use. I could assign the samples that I want to to all of the instruments within my template as well. So I could set up my chosen violin one sample set. You can begin to see how this is going to save time because if I can then save that as a template, when I open it, effectively all of my instruments are pre-configured, not just with their levels, but also with reverb settings then of course it saves me having to do that every single time I start a new project. Okay, so how do I actually save this as a template? Well, remember, I've got to be a bit careful. Firstly, let's get rid of the sounds we don't want. If I've actually got sort of two templates working here together, do I want my strings mix or the other collection of tracks? Or am I the sort of singer songwriter who actually writes for vocals and piano and bass, but also really likes a string arrangement? Okay, well, let's suppose that's true. I've now got a nice collection of sounds all ready to go. So I'm going to unmute all of these instruments apart from the drums. I'm going to select the piano as the sound that I want to have open every single time I come to write my project. I've already selected the tempo that I want to work out as well. So I think I'm pretty good to go in terms of saving this song as a template. So here's how it works. I'm gonna to come to Logic and rather than just going to file and save, which would save this project as a regular Logic project, instead what I'm going to do is to come to save as template. And when I do that, I can call this anything I like. You can see I've got a couple of other templates already in the project templates folder. And I'm gonna call this, I don't know, songwriter start. Okay, and I've written in capitals. That's how important it is. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press save. And rather than saving this project as a regular Logic project, as I say, it's saved it as a template. So how do I open it up? How do I recall it? Okay, well, let's close this project down. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to save it as a song in its own right. Remember, that's not what I've done and I don't need to save it like that. I've saved it as a template. So I'm gonna press don't save. And instead, what I'm gonna do is come back to the file menu and I'm going to come to open up a new project from a template, the second option here down. And when I do that, I've got an opportunity to dive into my templates, any projects that I have saved as a template. And here is the project that I've just made, and I can then press choose. And when I do that, Logic is gonna open really quickly a collection of sounds exactly as I've saved them. And look, the piano is selected just like I knew it would be, and I'm ready to go. And from the beginning, I'm now ready to start playing and writing. I've got drums ready to go. And yes, I haven't set up the string instruments, but if I had, they'd all be waiting for me as well. So really quickly, I've now got a collection of sounds ready to go. Now, a lot of people ask the question, yeah, but doesn't that just mean you end up writing the same piece of music every single time you open up your template? Well, that's up to you. How sophisticated do you want your template to be? In theory, if you could take every sound that you have ever written for, literally a thousand tracks, and you were to arrange them in an organized way so that rather than restricting you, you had an enormous amount of choice every time you open up your project, rather than actually being an impediment, that would be really inspiring. 
if you think about it, the time that we lose when we write music is the time spent going, yeah, which sounds do I want to browse through? And if you had a whole collection of synth pads or synth basses or sounds that you like to work with ready to go, remember you can swap them at any stage as well on a per track basis. You can just swap out any sound. If I wanted to change this piano sound, I can absolutely do that. But what templates do is to jumpstart you into the creative process by offering you a collection of sounds ready to go, organized in the way that you want them to be.